What's up guys, Sila here, and we're here with something a little bit different, but a few people have asked me how I've geared for PvP so quick, so I decided to do kind of like a, I wouldn't really call it a guide, but more of an introduction to getting started in PvP, things that you should know, how to gear up, how to continue throughout, you know, and how the whole PvP system works. If you're new to the game, if you've been a PvE hero like myself all game, just not at the time or just maybe not even knew how to get into it. Hopefully this will help you out and if it doesn't I'm sorry it's not the normal video I'd kind of do but hopefully the title will persuade you not to watch it if it's not something you're going to be interested in. So the new season has literally just begun and you have a very small period of time to actually be able to compete basically. The the reason I say that is the, the longer the, the tier goes on, the longer the season goes on, the harder it is to catch up because people are going to be getting the higher end gear and you're going to be getting the introduction gear. So there's always going to be that gap. I mean, eventually you can catch up, but it'll feel very frustrating and annoying and you'll kind of understand why a bit more a little bit later on. But basically this character is ready to go. It's on par with everyone else right now in terms of gear. It is fully geared in last season's gear. And it also has some of the new season gear, and I'll explain how I've got that already as well. If we look at the playtime, it's got one day, 20 hours. This character got dinged maybe 10 days ago. It was just kind of an old that I had that I haven't played since Cataclysm. And I got asked if I wanted to join a PvP guild and try out some PvP. I was like, yeah, sure, let's go. So I leveled it up, I transferred it, and I started gearing it. And it took me about three to four days to fully gear it. So now I am on par with everyone else. It's fully gemmed, fully enchanted, you know, it is ready to go. There's, if I was to go in an arena, I would be literally the same as anyone else. You know, they wouldn't have more HP or anything like that. They would be the same. So you want to be at this point as well, and you still can be if you're quick enough. Now for EU, you won't see the season till tomorrow, but for US, it has literally just started today. So you have about a week, really, but a little bit more as well before people start pulling ahead in terms of gear. So this first step you want to do is start gaining honor gear. If you don't know where honor gear comes from, you can only buy it from Pandaria. You can't get it in Orgrimmar or Stormwind. You need to come to Pandaria. For Horde, we're going to head to Town Loan Steps. Just above the wall here, as you see, the Horde logo, that is where you'll come to to buy the honor and conquest gear for level 90. For Alliance, You'll go to Dread Waste and just below Terence of Gurtham, see this notch on the wall, this building, that is where you'll buy the Honor and Conquest gear for level 90 as Alliance. So those are the two places you want to head to. We're going to head inside, and you're going to have your Conquest vendor, and you're going to have your Honor vendor. Now right now the Honor vendor is what we're interested in. This is going to sell you all of last season's gear. So last season you could get full Grievous, which is 5-2-2 item level if you've got all of it. And that is pretty much what everyone is in right now. Like this current moment, everyone is in 522 item level gear. And you want to catch up and be at that same item level. Especially in this expansion, gear difference is huge. Being 10 item levels ahead, you will really feel the difference. So this person, this person will sell the conquest gear, and I'll talk a little bit of like what conquest is a little bit later on. But basically, basically this is 550 item level. So if you get full conquest gear, you're going to be 550 item level. It'll take you a while to get it, but, you know, that's the eventual goal after a few weeks of playing. And as you can see, look at the stats different. I mean, 500 stamina different, 400 strength. Like, those differences are huge. 300, well, nearly 300 haste. Like, that is a huge difference. So, as you can tell, like, the difference between those two pieces of gear is massive. Pardon me. So, the first step is getting your honor gear. So we're not going to get too far ahead of ourselves. You want to be where I am. 522 item level. I've got a little bit more because I have two pieces of the current season gear. But, ignore that. Just pretend I'm 522 for the time being. There's a couple of ways of getting honor. The first is the most typical and logical way of doing battlegrounds. You queue for a battleground. If you queue for the randoms, you'll get the sort of the random reward bonus. You can either queue for a random battleground or a call to arms, and both of these will reward the sort of bonus. And if you win or lose, you'll get the bonus. You'll get a small, well, you won't get a full bonus, you won't get 270 for the win, but you'll get maybe like 50 for a loss. So, 
yep, queue up for Battlegrounds, but if you're in bad gear, you're probably going to not enjoy it. You'll get your ass kicked, you'll die all the time, and it just won't really feel like a, an enjoyable experience. So I would recommend waiting to do Battlegrounds until you're a little bit more geared at least. So you stand a chance, and then you can start sort of practicing how to play your class properly. Early on, all it'll teach you is what's going to kill you the quickest, basically. When you've got 300k HP, you're not going to be able to like learn to play, you're just going to die. So I wouldn't really recommend doing Battlegrounds to begin with. What I would recommend doing is dungeons. If you queue for a random heroic dungeon, you can normally get one completed in about 10 minutes. On average, you get 500 justice per dungeon, and you can convert 500 justice into 250 honor. So let's do a quick bit of math. 500 justice per dungeon, 10 minute average run, you're gonna be looking at 3k justice per hour. That converts into 1,500 honor, that means you're going to be earning 1,500 honor per hour. So, you know, after a couple of hours, you've got a couple of pieces of gear, and you can continue doing that for a few days, and you'll be fully geared. And it's a great way to do it. You know, it's not too frustrating. Dungeons might not be the funniest thing to do, but at least it's not frustrating to do most of the time. So, I would recommend that if you're in lower gear. Try and get, a, if you can, get a pre-made group of good geared players that can basically carry you through it if you're low geared. If not, just keep queuing and then try and find people who want to carry on queuing and just queue with them and make the runs very quick. If you don't know where to convert honor, uh, sorry, justice to honor, for Horde, it's in Orgrima, just above Garish's room. For Alliance, it's in Stormwind, just near the SI7, is it? Um, near the sort of dummies and the horse vendor and the riding trainer, you'll find in that building, you'll find the Justice Quartermasters, and they'll transfer your Justice to Honor, and then you'll come back to, uh, back to Pandaria to, to spend it, basically. The cool thing about doing Dungeons as well, is this character had about 300 gold at level 90. When I'd finished getting gear, I had 7,000 gold. That's because I greeted on every single blue. I didn't ninja them, I just greeted on them, and I would loot all the corpses and I would greed on the greens and vendor it all. If I got any BOEs I'd try and sell them if they were decent and I'd you know vendor slash sell everything and that ended up with me being on about 7k gold which was enough gold for me to get fully gemmed and enchanted and once again that is very 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 important. So I would recommend trying to do that if possible. Now you might have some honor and you're like well what piece of gear should I get first? That's hard to say. Normally, what you want to be aiming for is the, the most important pieces of gear are 2 slash 4 set. So getting your 2 set bonus and your 4 set bonus in PvP. By that I mean if when you equip 2 pieces of the either head, shoulders, chest, gloves or legs combination, you'll get a 2 set bonus. And when you equip 4 pieces of that combination, you'll get a 4 set bonus. So those pieces are considered to be quite important. Weapons are usually quite important, especially as a melee or sometimes caster, as they give you a big boost in stats. I mean, look at that, 7,700 PvP power. And trinkets are also very important as well. And then after that, I'd start looking at your sort of off pieces, which is neck, back, braces, um, waist, boots, rings. What I do, personally, I'll get my two-set bonus first, so I'll get like helm, shoulders, and then I'll start saving for weapon, because to get the weapon, you need to have earned 7,250 honor in the current season. So by that, you can even convert justice to honor and that will count, because it counts as you've earned that honor. But you need to have earned a total, it doesn't mean you need to save up that much, you just need to have a total earned. So you can spend it and it'll still count. So that's what I would normally do, I'd get my two piece, then I'd save for weapon, get my weapon. Then I'd finish off, um, and that, sorry, then I'd get my trinket is this, you know, removes movement of fear and effects, but if you're a human you don't need to worry about that. And then I'd get my four set, then I'd finish off my other trinket, and then I would, you know, get off the uh, all the off pieces. Some people prefer to get both the trinkets after the weapon, and then finish off the four set because you get this massive boost in resilience, so it just depends on what kind of class you're playing and how you basically want to gear. I like having the HP and things like that though, you know, so... It's up to you. And then once you finish off your four piece, get your fifth piece, then you want to get the 1750 pieces, which is belt, boots, and I think braces as well. And then you want to get your 1250, which is neck, back, rings. And then you're done, you're fully geared. So 
that's how I basically get the character up. Ran dungeons and that gave me gold. The, the sad thing about uh, Battlegrounds is you don't get any gold from it. So if you're a poor character like me, that's a really good way of making some gold and ensuring you're fully good to go. As I said, gems and enchants and reforges will make the difference. So I'm not really going to tell you how to gear as your specific class or how to gem or enchant. I'm going to leave that down to you to look up your class on forums like Elitus Shirt, sorry not Elitus Shirt, that's PvE. Uh, Arena Junkies has got some good PvP information and Noxic or Icy Veins has some good basic class information. I, I say basic. Don't take their guides as word as they're very, very, they're aimed more at beginning players. You know, look at it and be like, okay, this gives me an idea of what I should be doing. But the more sort of min-maxing players will be found on places like uh, Arena Junkies. So we're fully geared in on again. What's next? Well, now you begin your conquest gearing. Conquest comes from a few places. You can get conquest from, uh, if you don't know what conquest is, basically conquest comes from rated play. And if we go to our PvP tab, so you can earn conquest from five places, really. The first is twos, threes, and fives, so 2v2, you'll find a friend and play twos. You'll find two friends and play threes, or you'll find four friends and play fives. You can't, like, get, you can't just queue on your own, it won't match you up with someone, so you'll need someone to play with you. If you're a healer, you want to go with a DPS. If you're a DPS, you want to either go with a, pardon me, sorry, if you want to go with a DPS or a healer, it's up to you. I'd recommend in twos going with a double DPS because it makes the matches quick. If you go healer DPS, expect long and probably frustrating matches. So if you're just looking to get some conquest, I would recommend just doing double DPS. The other way is rated battlegrounds. If you're not familiar with these, you get nine other people and you queue for rated battlegrounds. And this is kind of like um, strategic battlegrounds, so less random, less people just running everywhere and sitting in the middle killing people. It's more constructed and more, you know, focused on objectives. So it's a lot of fun if you can get a fun group of people to play with. They can be very, very fun because it's different from your average battleground. So if you do enjoy battlegrounds, that is definitely the way to go. And normally, the top end PvPers will look to do rated battlegrounds first because you can get a higher cap easier from doing rated battlegrounds. Now what I mean by that is if we mouse up to the top, you'll see that it says all 2,200, rated 2,200, arenas 1,000, uh, 1,800, and random BGs 1,800. Now it also says re uh, random BGs. If you do a random BG, you'll get 150 conquests for your first win every day, and you'll get 75 for every win after that. So in theory, you could get your conquest cap each week from just doing battlegrounds but it's very slow, so it's up to you if you really want to do that. Now, rated battlegrounds are good because if you lose as well, you'll still get some points. As long as your team captured an objective or did something in the battleground that was like constructive, they'll get points, you'll get conquest, even if you lose. So that's a, a great way of getting some points. Um, while in Arena, if you don't win, you don't get anything. There's no, there's no pat on the back kind of thing. If you lose, you lose. Now, what I meant by increasing your cap is when you play Arena, you get, or even Rated Battlegrounds, you get something called Rating. And the more Rating you have, the bigger your Conquest cap will be. So it doesn't start increasing your Conquest cap until around, I think it's 1,500. But when you hit 1,500, your cap will increase slightly. And if you hit maybe 1,700, you'll have a quite big cap. So that's the goal. You want to try and push for a higher rating because that will mean you are getting more conquest each week which means you are gearing faster. Now one thing you might notice is the fact that you can only earn 1800 from arenas or battlegrounds and then there's this 400 gap that needs to come from rated battlegrounds. Now that's not always like that when you get a higher arena rating your rated battle cap won't change but your arena cap will change. So eventually your arena cap will catch up. So it just depends on how you want to play if you want to do the arena route and you want to focus on getting a higher arena rating, or you want to do the rated battlegrounds route, and you want to focus on your rated battlegrounds rating. Both of those will get you gear, and as I said, rated battlegrounds are generally more profitable. One, because you get points no matter what, and two, because it's easier to get a higher cap. So, 
yeah, you won't start losing rating until past sort of a 1k mark. So don't worry if you're new to Arena, just find someone who's new or someone who's willing to play with you and just play. If you lose, you don't lose anything. But later on down the line, when you lose, you'll lose a little bit of points. But you don't ever lose conquest points unless you spend them. So hopefully now you have an idea of how conquest works and when you get some conquest, you'll come to the conquest vendor and you'll buy whatever you want, basically. And conquest works the same as honor. You need to earn 7,250 conquest before you can buy the weapon. So I'll be doing the same route of getting my two tier pieces and weapon. Because weapon, for especially for a melee, is such a big upgrade. Weapons for melee is massive. Now, before I mentioned I had two pieces of prideful already. And the reason I have two pieces already is thanks to the world bosses. Now, if you don't know what they are, there's a place called the Timeless Isle. If you just look on your map to the right of the Jade Forest, there's an island. And there'll be a place called the Celestial Court. There will sit four bosses. There'll be Chiji, Zuin, um, Nizao, and Yuslan, or whatever the dragon's called. Uh, there'll be the four bosses sat in the middle. We'll click on world bosses. There we go. Oh, Yulon, sorry. And they'll sit in the middle, and you can kill them once a week. You can only kill one of the four once a week, and you'll have a chance of getting prideful gear. Now, it's random what you actually get, but you can get any of the off pieces, as you can see here. And you can also get boots, sorry, you can also get legs or gloves. So, it's very, very worthwhile doing. I mean, essentially, you could get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine... You can't get trinkets, so you could get nine pieces just from killing those bosses. Now, it's unlikely that you'll get all the pieces that you need, but hey, it can happen. I got two within the first week of killing them. So you can kill them once a week, and you'll have one chance of getting the loot. But there's an item in the game that allows you to have a second chance every week, and those are called Warforged Shields. And what you'll do to get Warforged Shields is you'll trade in 50 lesser charms to your charm maker in your shrine so Horde Alliance will come to the bottom of your shrine and there'll be this charm maker and you'll trade in uh, 50 lesser charms if you don't know where they come from you basically hand in and um, you can get lesser charms from killing level 90 mobs or doing daily quests at level 90 I'd recommend killing the frogs on the timeless isle there's an area with some gulp frogs and those are very easy to kill in a sense and they'll give you a lesser charm for killing them randomly and you'll also get a lesser charm from looting them randomly. So, very profitable. You can get it done in maybe 30 minutes. Come here, hand in your 50 lesser charms, and then you'll get three Warge Force shields. So I'll, that'll last you for 50 weeks. Sorry. That'll last you for three weeks. And you can, basically, when you kill the world boss on the Timeless Isle, it'll pop up a box. Do you want to roll for extra loot? You click the, the, the dice that says need and it'll roll and you'll have a chance of getting a second piece of luck and if you're lucky like me you could get two pieces from the same boss so definitely worthwhile doing it'll help you gear quicker even if you only get one piece that's a chunk of conquest that you no longer need to get that's more gear that you have right now so it is definitely worthwhile doing that and getting into that so that's the general gearing out the way so hopefully you have an idea of how to gear up and how to progress Every week you want to be getting your conquest cap. No matter what, even if you do it through twos, even if you do it through battlegrounds, you want to log on, you want to kill, um, you want you know you want to do arena or whatever, and you want to make sure your cap is full, and then you can log off whatever. But you do want to make sure you're getting your cap each week because, as I said, gear is so important. If you try and get rating, and you leave it three months down the line, people are going to be five. 45, 550 item level, and you're still going to be 522, they will beat you pretty much straight up. Like, they have the gear advantage, and that is enough for them to just win. So, it's very, very important that you are actually focusing on getting your conquest cap each week. Even if your rating isn't high enough to give you an increased cap, as long as you're getting your minimum cap each week, that is enough. So, eventually you'll get full conquest cap, and you're able to play. Now, the 3 scene and the RBG scene is the more sought-after areas, because 3s is kind of the more balanced side, uh, side of PvP, and RBGs is kind of just the way to go. 
In terms of threes, what you want to be looking for is two DPS and a healer. I'm not going to go through all the comps that work well for your class and stuff. I'm going to leave that down to you to look at as well. But in the beginning, just try and have some fun and find people who want to play and just practice. You want to get things like macros that will help you target um, the enemy team and your own team. As a paladin, I've not got them set up on this character, but as a paladin, I have this box up here. And basically what that is for is for healing my own team, um, interrupting the enemy team without me actually targeting them. Stunning the enemy team without me having to target them. Using things like bop and sacrifice and freedom on my team without you know targeting them. So it's very useful to have those kind of macros set up. On top of that, I would recommend an add-on called Gladius. And if you really want it, I'll explain what Gladius does first, actually. Gladius basically adds a box to the side of your screen. Um, it'll begin in the middle, do slash Gladius space test, move it to the side, resize it, whatever you need to do. And that will allow you to see the enemy's PvP trinkets, their diminishing returns, if you don't know what diminishing returns is. Say, for example, I stun you, and my stun resets for some cra crazy reason. Or I'm playing two rep paladins. I stun you, and then my friend goes to stun you. The second stun will be halved. And then if I stun you again, it'll be half of the half. So say it starts off as 10 seconds, it'll go down to 5 seconds, and then 2.5 seconds and then eventually you'll be immune, you won't be stunnable. But when your diminishing return ends, I can stun you again for 10 seconds. So diminishing return tracking is very useful because if your stun comes off cooldown and they've got two seconds left on diminishing returns, you'll want to wait for two seconds and then stun them because you're getting the full duration of that stun. You can also see when they've, uh, if their PvP trinket is up, which is useful as well because you'll know, okay, I'm going to stun this guy and he can't do anything about it. And it'll also show if the, there's any major sort of buffs or debuffs on the, that person. And it also shows the health as well. And you can use it to easily click on them to target them. And, you know, gives you good awareness. So they're definitely a useful add-on. The other add-on is called Gladiator Loser, I think, is how it's pronounced. And basically what that will do is that's a little voice-based program. And it will tell you when the enemy team has done is doing something bad, basically. So, for example, it will alert you if the mage is casting Polymorph. So you know, okay, he's casting Polymorph, I'm going to run behind this pillar. Or I'm going to give myself... I'm going to put Sack on my partner so when I'm Polymorph, the Sack will break the Polymorph. Or Warriors popped Berserking, I'm going to run. Or, you know, like... Oh, sorry, Recklessness, I'm going to run because he's going to do a lot of damage. You know, that those kind of things, and it'll help you gain more awareness of what's going on in the match because knowing when someone's pop cooldowns or someone's casting hex is all very important because you need to be able to counter it. Now that's more for higher end play but it'll help you learn to be more aware at early on play. So yeah, hopefully this that's about all I've, I've got to say. Hopefully this video has helped you out in getting a general idea of what you need to be doing in terms of PvP. If you've got any questions Feel free to ask them. As I said, I'm literally just starting PvP this season as well. This will be my first season I actually try to get somewhere. And I've said it in the past and I've never really got around to it. I've never actually joined a PvP guild and tried. And this will be the first season I do it. So hopefully I'll get you some videos as well. Um, some PvP based videos. Maybe down the line I'll do a rep PvP guide. And I'll definitely do a rep PvE guide anyway. And yeah. Hopefully you'll enjoy it. So thanks for watching, guys. As I said, if you've got any questions, I'll try and get them answered. Even if it's I ask someone else to ask, you know, to get the information for you. I'll try and answer your question. Have fun. If you're getting into PvP like me as well, it's definitely a, a different scene. I've been pve in all the time, so experiencing some PvP is definitely going to be fun. And yeah. Thanks for watching, guys. See you for the next video. See ya.